Hi everyone, welcome back to the Franknet Sewing Machines YouTube channel. My name's Charlene and I'm the Assistant Manager here at the Franknet Sewing Machine Shop in Birmingham. In today's video we're going to be looking at the Benina 480. So it's a great machine and we'd like to show you the accessories as well as the threading and how the machine actually works. So first of all we'll take a look at the accessories and what comes in the box. So laid out here we have the Benina wardrobe which comes with the 480 machine. So this allows you to keep all of your feet accessories all neatly in the wardrobe. It has doors on it as well. Hanging here on the hooks you can see you've got various different feet. So these are the feet that come with the Benina 480. You've got the overcasting foot, a zipper foot, blind hemming foot and down here we've got the 20C open toe embroidery foot. So that has a really wide opening which is really useful for all of the lovely patterns that the Benina 480 does. Various different sizes of spool caps, extra bobbins and then up here you can see you've got loads of compartments to keep all of your needles and your bobbins do slot into these bobbin holders here. You've also got a drawer which you can keep any extra bits that you accumulate and that can neatly be tucked in. With this machine you do get a knee lift as well, so we'll set that up later on in the video just so you can see how that works. You get various tools for oiling, for keeping the machine clean and I'll just show you as well, if you close the doors and turn it around, it does actually have magnets on the back so this will actually slot onto the machine and it's very portable and it will stay with the machine and you can carry it around or store it. So now we'll take a look at the threading and how to wind a bobbin as well. So with the Benina 480, it actually comes with the Benina Jumbo Bobbins. So these bobbins can take a lot more threads so you're less likely to run out quite as quickly. With these particular bobbins, you'll notice that they do have these metal strips on them. Those strips you want to make sure are actually going into the bobbin case. That means that you can't put the bobbin in the wrong way. That principle is the same for when you're winding the bobbin as well. It can only be wound on if you put them face in down. So you aren't in danger of doing that wrong. So to wind a bobbin, we'll put the thread on first. Along with our spool cap, it's very important. So winding the bobbin will come behind number one and then around number two, you can see your arrow here telling you which way the thread needs to go. And then if we wrap it around our bobbin a couple of times, and then there's also a thread trimmer just here. And then using our bobbin winder, just flick it across and it will wind the bobbin. And when we're all done, flip it off and then we can trim the excess off. So putting the bobbin in the bobbin case it can only go in one way and then bringing the thread through like that and then again putting it into the bobbin area and it just clips into place it makes a little clipping sound and then you can trim the thread just there on the thread cutter. So we'll close up the bobbin door and then we'll move on to the top thread. So starting from the top, starting at number one, we'll bring it around the back hook, bringing it back down and then around the take-up link and then behind the needle bar. And then we've got our needle threader as well. So using my left hand, I'll bring the needle threader down, wrap it around the hook and bring it to the eye of the needle and then coming back up to a thread cutter which is on the right hand side and then slowly letting go of the needle threader it brings the thread through and then we can pull the thread from the back. And Then we'll just tuck it under the foot we don't need to catch the bobbin thread, it will catch it when we start sewing as well. 
we'll pop our table on. So with this particular model, we do get a table in the box and that just slides on just like that. So we'll take a look at the screen as well as the buttons and the interface of the machine. So as you can see here, lit up, we've got the big green start stop button as well as a tying off function, a scissor button, which is great, about the 480, it does have the scissor button. We've also got our back stitch button here. Here we have our speed control, which you use in conjunction with the start stop button, which we'll show you now shortly. You've also got the lovely Bonina color touchscreen, which displays all of your stitches and your dials here, which is for width and length. We have our needle position, our needle up and down and our pattern end. We'll go through those when we're looking at the screen. So here we have the Benina stylus. So this is an optional extra that you can purchase so that you're not always using your fingers. And as you can see, you just select the stitch that you want to use using the stylus. Down the side here, we've got the tension to begin with. So on screen we have the tension which automatically sets itself depending on which stitch you've chosen but you can override it if you choose. So anytime we make a change it will light up yellow to say that we've changed the default setting. So if we come out of that screen and if we look up at the tension when I select a stitch you can see it's automatically setting the tension to suit. So second tab down, we have your foot selection. So depending on which stitch you select, it will prompt you with all the different feet that are suitable to use with that particular stitch. And it, it will advise just here what foot you should be using. This is a safety thing to stop any damage being done to certain feet if it's not suitable for that particular stitch. Here we have our foot pressure as well. It's just telling you that there's a big dial on the side of the machine where the foot pressure can be adjusted. You can tell the machine what needle plate you're using, what needle. Again, it, this is also a safety thing, so you're not doing any damage if you've got your straight stitch plate on. And you can see at the moment we've got our 9mm stitch plate selected and our standard needle. We have a short video to show you how to drop the feed dogs. Big button on the side, nice and simple. And a short video to show you how to thread the bobbin and you can pause it mid-video as well. But once you've done it a few times, you'll know what you're doing, but that's just there, just in case you're unsure. Down this side, we do have our, all of our stitch selections. So we've got our utility stitches to begin with. We can maximize the screen so that you can see the stitches better. Next tab down, we have all of our decorative stitches, which are all in separate folders. And we can use the tab to go back out and go into another folder. And as you can see with the 480, you've got loads and loads to choose from and a picture graph. Next tab down, we have your alphabet. So you can do various different alphabet stitches, which go up to the nine millimeter stitch width, which is with the 480. Buttonholes, different styles of buttonholes and some quilting stitches as well in the quilting folder. So again, just selecting different stitches. The last one is the memory. So you can actually save combination stitches, whether it's a decorative stitch along with an alphabet, you can save it in the memory. What you can also do is press the question mark and then select anything that's on the screen and it will tell you what that stitch is and what it's used for. So if you're ever unsure, instead of always having to refer to your manual, you can actually use this question mark button. So if you were unsure about the feet, you can go in and press the question mark and then select the stitch. So that's a really, really useful tool. If we go into the home section, you've got your settings so you can personalize the machine and set it up how you want to. So third tab along, we have our creative consultant. 
So this generates various different types of fabric and what you can do is press our question mark button and then the fabric and it will tell you what fabric the symbol means and so here we've got medium weight woven selected and if we go in and then select the type of stitch we're going to use so straight stitch it will recommend what you should actually use so the type of needle the type of stitch you should use the weight of the thread as well as the foot and if we press our green tick button it will actually set it at the stitch it recommends as well as the tension and you can just use it as a guide and then pop on the correct foot for that particular stitch. As we go back into the home we've also got our eco setting so you can use this if you've got your machine set up at a certain on a certain stitch with a certain width or length you can and you need to go away from your machine you can just set it on standby and it will save all of your settings without you having to turn the machine off and then to kick it back into into use you just press the screen and it will start working again and it still has our saved stitch that we were using so what we can do now is actually give the machine a little run so you can see how it works and what it sounds like so pop our foot down so we've got our 1c foot on so this means that it has the 9 millimeter stitch width which is suitable for the Benina 480 we have a straight stitch selected and we'll use our start button which is the big green button and we hold it for a millisecond and use our speed control or you can use the foot control whichever you prefer we have our stop button as well as our scissor button so it's set up to do a tying off stitch and then to cut the thread you can personalize the machine for whatever way you want to finish and there you have it what we'll do as well is we'll change over the foot and do a decorative stitch so you can see how that works so now we've put our 20c foot on so this is our embroidery open toe foot so we can take a look at some of the decorative stitches and we've also popped the knee lift on so you can see how that works and why that's beneficial so if we come to our screen and go to our second tab down and select one of our lovely decorative stitches you can see it's set to the full 9 millimeter stitch width and it's automatically set the tension for us and using our start stop button and our speed control and what you can do as well is using the pattern end button when it gets to a certain stitch and you know that you want to finish if you were doing a border we can press the pattern end button and it will finish the flower that it's doing so you don't get anything half done what we can do is set for the needle to finish in the down position using this icon here so if we do another stitch and then using our pattern end button it will finish that particular flower with the needle down if we were doing a border and then we then wanted to pivot we can use our knee lift so using our knee we can move it to the side and it will temporarily lift the foot so we can pivot the fabric and drop it back down and then we can start again so it's a great open toe foot that comes with the machine and allows you to see what you're doing with all those decorative stitches and we'll use our pattern end button again to finish that flower and then uh, using our scissor button the machine is set to do a tying off stitch and to cut the thread there we are so with the 9mm stitch width that actually comes with the 480 they're much much bolder and you can actually see the decorative stitches or the alphabets um, much more because simply because the stitch width is so much larger. With the Benina 480 you do also get the buttonhole foot so this is the buttonhole foot with the slider as well as the guide which allows you to mark and helps you when you're trying to figure out placement with buttonholes so that is included with the Benina 480 as well. So that concludes our video with the Benina 480 it's a great machine 
Um, it's the highest model in the 4 series range. So if you do have any questions, then do put them in the comments box or call our shop or even pop in and see us because we have it on display. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!